Hey everybody, welcome to this very special event today. We still got another five minutes before we are going to officially get things started here. Uh, but I just wanted to pop on a few minutes early just to do some announcements. So this Monday, uh, I'm going to be doing kind of a special webcast for everybody. Uh, it's going to be Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific. It's just going to be a kind of a Q&A special, right? So it'll be a Q&A special webcast, not with Adronus, just between you guys and me, right? So I'm going to try this uh, new webcast uh, on Monday and just see how it goes from there. Uh, the Friday webcast will still remain as the same. It'll still be happening every week. But I'm trying this new one uh, on Monday just to see how people are enjoying it. But it's just straight Q&A, right? It's not, uh, there's no energy healing and there's no channeling with Adronis. It's just between me and you guys on the live chat. So that will be happening this Monday. It's just referred to as New Earth Teachings uh, Q&A. So again, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, 2 p.m. Eastern this Monday. I'll be trying that out and just seeing how it goes. And if we like it more and more, then maybe I'll bring it in as a weekly uh, as a weekly webcast onto the YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, good to see everybody here. Like I said, it'll be about three or four minutes and we're going to get started with the webcast today. So before we do the webcast, I always, of course, do the announcements. Uh, so the first one is here. Beautiful, sacred geometrical clothing, apparel, and accessories imbued with spirit source energy to heal, rejuvenate, detoxify, and strengthen the body. Shop now at HealingCodeShop.com. Okay, and there will, de there will be a debut of a new t-shirt that's coming as well too on the Healing Code Shop. It's uh, called the Youth Body t-shirt. Okay, so in the Mind Deck, there is a Youth Body Enhancer in the Healing Code Cards Mind Deck there's a uh, youth body enhancer. And that is basically taking the card and just putting it on the shirt, right? So I am looking to unravel, uh, I'd say not really unravel, <laughs> uh, to completely debut that um, t-shirt uh, this weekend. So either Saturday or Sunday. So it'll be a youth body t-shirt and it will have all the same effects that the uh, youth body enhancer has in the mind deck. And of course, you'll be able to do amplification control of it as well too, just like the other t-shirts. So look for that this weekend. It will be po it will be posted on uh, New Earth Teachings, um, sorry, on the New Earth Teachings Facebook, and of course on Healing Code Cards Facebook, and I'll even put a, uh, a post on YouTube for those who want to grab a Youth Body t-shirt. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to order one myself, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Of course, the Healing Code Card Mind Deck, uh, is also available right now at HealingCodeCards.com. Again, it's a digital ver uh, digital edition. Right? The printed version will be coming in January, the physical deck, uh, probably around mid or late January. So again, keep your eyes out for that. And of course, there will be another drawing. I forgot to update this, actually. <laughs> uh, there will be another drawing happening here at the end of the month. The last Friday of November uh, will be a free drawing. So again, you can go to Facebook.com slash HealingCodeCards. I'm giving away two free healing code cards body decks. Uh, so we had two winners last month, and so two more winners will be selected at the end of November. So again, go check out facebook.com slash healing code cards. You'll see a pinned post, and you just put your comment there, and you'll be automatically entered into the drawing. Okay. And of course, healing code cards, the body deck, and the healing code cards mind deck now available. The body deck is available on amazon.ca and amazon.com. And of course, the digital edition of the body deck uh, is in English and Spanish, and that's available on the Healing Code Cards website. Also, the Healing Code Cards Mind Deck uh, digital edition is also. I can update this too, man. Alive, <laughs> October fourteenth. We're way past October fourteenth now, Brad. What's the matter with you? <laughs> so yes, that's available right now. The Mind Deck and the body deck in digital versions. And of course, if you're an international customer, just go to HealingCodeCards.com, and you can order the physical deck of the Healing Code Cards body deck, okay? And I am working on another deck uh, for this summer. It's going to be called the Energy Deck, okay? So that'll be the next one to come. So there will be basically four decks, okay? So we have the body deck, we have the mind deck, we'll have the energy deck, and then we'll have the encore deck. So those will be the four decks that will make the entire collection of the Healing Code Cards series. So I'm looking forward to this coming summer where I'll be rolling that out as well to the Energy Deck. All right, so it is now 12 p.m. Pacific. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special webcast, this free webinar, you could say, as well, too, where Adronis is going to be coming through here in a few minutes and talking about 2021, 
the year of transition and the point of no return and with things to come as well too. More momentum of things to come. Now, when I have done these videos in the past, uh, they've been pre-recorded, right? So I did the pre-recorded 2020 video with Adronis, the pre-recorded 2019, 2018, 2017, just kept going, right? They were always pre-recorded, but because they were always super popular on my channel, I thought, you know what? I think this time I'm gonna do a live webcast with it. So rather than just uh, sitting at my uh, whiteboard with a chair channeling Adronis and sharing this information and not being live, I think we'll do the opposite this time and we'll start coming uh, on live and we'll share this information because then you guys will be able to ask uh, questions afterwards. Now, of course, I do not have a moderator today. So Adronis will give his presentation. I will come out of the state temporarily. I will look into the live chat and I'm basically just looking for some good questions. Uh, to ask Adronis, okay guys? So there's no real personal questions here for this webcast, okay? That's for private sessions. So it's really just kind of related to what is being talked about. So Adronis is gonna reveal a lot of information today. Okay, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be coming out. 2021 is such a powerful day. Oh, powerful, <laughs> what am I doing? Such a powerful year, because to me, to me, 2021 is just a day long and it's like that, it's gone. Sorry, guys, it's brought to you by dyslexia again. <laughs> um, anyways, 2021 is such a powerful year, but of course, we're still going through 2020, and there's still a lot of powerful things to come here uh, before the end of the year, right? Such as the point of no return. So Adronis is going to be talking about the point of no return firstly, and then we'll be getting into 2021. Okay, a lot of people have asked me, is Adronis going to talk about the elections? Yes, because there's a big announcement regarding that too. Something that's very, very surprising that only a few people really know about. All right, so I'm going to leave that to him. Uh, when we get into that, we're going to firstly do a guided meditation, and I'll be bringing Adronis in. Uh, but of course, he's going to be talking more about 2021, what it represents, uh, possibilities, probabilities for what is going to occur. So again, guys, we have to remember that everything that I and Adronis share is simply that of our perspective, our point of view. As Adronis says, for all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very hearts, beings, and souls. Some people will feel like they need to chisel what I say into granite. Okay? No, you do not have to do that. This is all perspective. This is all waves of momentum. Right? But there is a divine plan. Okay? And we are running through the course of that divine plan here and now. A very large uh, combination of that divine plan that is happening right now. The point of no return. Uh, I mean, that is enormous within itself. We could basically look at almost like 2020 and 2021 being like the actual 2012, right? Uh, this is basically what 2012 was supposed to be, was very much like what we're going through right now. But the funny thing is if you basically take 2012 and you take the two and the one and you switch places, you have 2021, right? So it is very much like that. I would say 2021 would definitely be what 2012 was supposed to be, right? So, again, just a lot of exciting things that we're going to go through today. And like I said, we will have Q&A. So if you guys do have some questions for Adronis or myself afterwards, uh, feel free to put that up on the chat. But I will be just, just be going through questions to find out what are the good ones to share relating to the presentation today. So first and foremost, we're going to do our uh, guided meditation. And then we'll be getting into uh, the channeling state uh, through Adronis. And then he'll come in and he'll present this information. So guys, just getting yourself nice and comfortable, making sure your body is free of any tension. All right, because I'm sure we got a lot of people just at the edge of their seat. What's Adronis gonna say? What's he gonna say? What's this gonna be? All right, <laughs> let's take a deep coming breath, right? Okay, get yourself into a nice, relaxed, comfortable posture, free of any tension, okay? Placing your hands upon the center of your chest, closing your eyes, Taking a deep breath in, deep breath out. Once again, deep breath in, deep breath out. And one more time, deep breath in, and deep breath out. All right. I want you now to bring your focus and awareness down to the base of your spine, feeling the black roots. Okay, from the base of the spine coming out, flowing down the legs, going down past the knees, past the ankles, down to the bottom center of both feet, feeling those black roots connecting. All right. 
and feeling that energy going deeper and deeper into the earth. And just feeling that energy now starting to move into the heart of the earth. Okay, so feeling that heart connection with the earth between yourself and these roots that are connecting with her. Okay, and I just want you now to do a scan of your body from the top of your head, going all the way down the bottom of your feet, and just looking at any surface debris, any surface tension, any surface anxiety, okay? And we're, we're seeing that as black liquid, and we're feeling that black liquid now converging into the base of the spine, and it's flowing through the roots, okay? So we're flowing all of that surface-based stress, that tension, that debris, out through the feet, and going all the way down through the roots into the earth and connecting directly to the heart of the earth. And so as it leaves your body, you are saying love and appreciation to earth. Thank you so much, Mother Earth. I love you. Please transmute all of this dense energy into pure light. Okay. So you're feeling that energy just starting to instantly transmute as soon as it leaves your body, as soon as it goes into the roots and moves into the center of the earth, into the heart. Okay, and we'll take a deep breath in, deep breath out after that. All right, now we're going to feel that brown energy of the earth moving upwards through the roots, connecting directly to our feet, connecting to our ankles, moving up to the knees, connecting up into the base of the spine. Okay, so we're not going to work with the chakra centers today but we are just going to work with that energy now at the base of the spine. We're going to take an inhale as we inhale. We're just moving that essence of the earth all the way up to the top of our head. And as we exhale, we're just putting all this earth energy around us. Okay, So it can basically, basically be like a clear energy. It does not have to have a certain color to it. It can be as clear as water. Okay, Bring it up to the top of our head, exhaling. Feeling that clear energy cascading down the body and connecting directly to the perineum. Okay. And now we turn in, tune into our heartbeat. Okay, as we take a deep breath in, deep breath out, we feel the toroidal field expanding. Okay. Top of the head, bottom of the feet. Again, if you are an advanced meditator or advanced at visuals, you can see both hemispheres spinning clockwise and counterclockwise. If you're not so good at visualization, you can just see it moving in a counterclockwise pattern. All right. So as it slowly spins, subtly and gracefully, again, our hands are still upon our heart. Taking another deep breath in. Feeling the spirit light within our heart, it's, uh, radiating without, okay? And that spirit light is now radiating into the toroidal field. And now we're feeling that spirit light, that white spirit light, imbuing entirely into the toroidal field. And now that energy is completely encapsulated into the toroidal field, and spirit is with us. Okay, so that spirit light is all around us right now, and it's here to serve you. All right, so if there's anything in regards to healing or any other form of assistance that you want spirit light to work with you with, it is here for you. Okay. So again, we'll take a moment now to take another deep breath in. One last deep breath. And exhale. And you can come back now into the present moment. All right. So like I said, with spirit light, you can get it to come upon your hands. All right. And just clearing off the shoulders, the chest, the abdomen, wherever you feel. Again, if there's any other tension that's trying to build up, you can just brush it off with the power of spirit light. Okay. So Adronis is really kind of tapping his feet right here. He's like, okay, are you done, Brad? You ready for me to come in now? <laughs> I can feel this really incredible energy of him just wanting to come in and share this information with you today. There's a lot he wants to talk about, okay? So I won't leave him at the gate anymore. I'm going to go ahead and bring Adronis in, and we will begin the presentation, 2021, the year of transition and the point of no return. So again, guys, I'll be back for Q&A, but enjoy the presentation from Adronis. Here we go. <clears throat> 
Soul Star <clears throat> Sirius We are here at this time. We bid you greetings and thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this broadcast through your internet collective consciousness. What we would like all of you to do at this time is simply allow yourselves to get relaxed, get comfortable, and tune in to the vibrations of Sirius directly to our star as it interfaces together with this conduit radiating this beautiful light, to which you can therefore intercept and interconnect and interweave yourselves together with. We will also state that all that we shall provide today is simply that of our perspective, our point of view. For all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very hearts, beings, and souls. 2,000. And 21, the year of transition. We understand that many of you have been waiting months for us to actually share this insight pertaining to the upcoming year. Not only that, but more information, please, Adronis, relating to the point of no return, December 21st, 2020. And that is what we will begin with, firstly, and then move on into information relating to 2021. As you are witnessing right now, there is a great divide taking place upon your planet. Many of you are at each other's throats. Many of you have actually decided to cut ties because of differences of opinions. This is something that has been foreseen by great mystics, Great prophets for many thousands of years. Brother will turn against brother. And there will be a great divide. There will be a great separation. There will be a displacement. And this will continue to happen more and more weeks and months and years ahead. Because again, what is happening is if we were to share this relating to a biblical proverb is the chaff is being separated from the wheat. And you will now start to realize that where you are going is going to be the culmination of a downfall of the corrupt. Now, when you are going into the point of no return, this is the official symbolism, as it were, that the axe is coming down. You can say goodbye entirely to everything that represents the old world relating to artificial agendas, corrupt configurations within your life stream, representing class rankings, representing unfairness, mistruths, calamity, corruption altogether. It is leaving your planet entirely. We would say that whatever happens on December 20th, 2020, will therefore lead into that culminating point of December 21st, 2020. And that when that point happens, the day before, many of you can feel a thickness in the air. Many of you will feel a surge of energy flowing through the entire planet. And as you move into December 21st, 2020, the axe comes down. 
the point of no return. So from that point forward, that is the benchmark. It is the benchmark where everything that represents corrupt secrets, corrupt lies, corrupt agendas, artificial forms of enslavement, of government control, of psychological operations will cease. December 21st, 2020, the crossing of a threshold where from that very moment will determine the momentum of your entire planet from that point forward. Those who are very much stuck within their own sludge, as it were, will still have a much more difficult time trying to get out of that sludge because there has been such an intensity upon your planet relating to affairs and events and circumstances that they feel that this entire world is falling apart. Here they are now, after December 21st, 2020, that's where they're going, downward. Then there are those in that sense who are uplifting themselves, who realize this is all part of a divine plan, who realize that there are indeed bright days ahead, who realize that the corrupt are going to fall, and that is going to be their path. This again is as we've talked about, is the wheat being separated from the chaff. And so, as the weeds are being pulled out, that will continue on a much more exponential level as you move in to 2021. But with 2020, with the point of no return, you are boarding your own trains. You are boarding your own planes. You are on a conveyance here. And the vibration that you align to exactly on December 21st, 2020, will be a very large field of vision that you are going to play out and portray within these years ahead. It is so very, very important that you are getting yourselves in the state of appropriate alignment to knowing that this is who you truly are, that you are living in love, that you are working together in harmony, that you are working to correct yourself. And this is, again, what makes a great fit for those that are going to cross this threshold within a little over a month's time. You need to look into your own foundations. You need to look within yourself and say, how is my foundation in this moment? Is it a rotted structure? Do I build houses with rotten wood? No, obviously not, because it's going to collapse under its own weight. Well, many of you still have some of those rotten pieces of wood that you have put in your foundations because you constantly worry about what is going to happen. You constantly concern yourself and you take yourself into these very, very dense, base-like states. And when you're there, you're noticing such a ripple of intensity of saying, I don't want to be here. Why am I here? Because you keep putting your energy towards other things that you are giving your power to. You are constantly giving your power to all of these events, whether they be political, whether they be sociological, financial, career-wise, family, friendship, etc. And you are drowning. You are basically tying a large stone with a rope around your ankles and you're tossing it into the sea and you're jumping right in and you're going to sink. And so it's very, very important that you are spending this time working on resolving, on harmonizing, on purifying your connection to your light, to your authenticity, to your genuine nature. Because when you come into the point of no return, the field of vision, as we will say, that represents your energy is what you are going to carry forward. Well, Adronis, does that mean I have to completely obliterate all challenges from myself entirely? No, it is not. 
It's the idea that you're simply being open to change. That you're letting yourself step into a cocoon, metamorphosize, and then step out as this beautiful butterfly. Yes, you have challenges. Yes, you may have hardships. But you realize that those are transient. You realize that they are temporary. And that they can be resolved. And if you are in that mindset, you will continue forward prosperously into the point of no return. But it's for those in that sense who feel that they want to fight. They want to argue. They want to manipulate. They want to control. They want to hurt and harm themselves and others. These are the ones who are going to have the most difficult time. Now, it is not impossible for the idea of one to get off their train and try to board another train. But it is in that sense very highly improbable. You have to look at this as two speeding trains. And if you try to open the door to one train and you think you're going to leap through the other door to the other train while it's going 300 miles per hour, both trains simultaneously, you're going to have a very, very difficult time attempting to get to that other train. As we stated, it's not impossible, but it is highly improbable. This is why you have some time right now. You have to look at your foundation. You have to see for yourself, am I being authentic? Am I being true to myself? Well, my family thinks this, Adronis, and my friends think this, and other people that I'm associated with or acquaintances with think that. Who cares? What matters in that sense is about what is true to you, and that you are therefore rectifying all of these old impressions and aspects of yourself that no longer serve. You're ready to Rip them out of yourself, put them into a pile, toss them into the fire. And that fire is indeed a true spiritual quenching fire. Because as you pull all of this out, all that's going to remain is your love. All that's going to remain is your truth. All that's going to remain is your authenticity. And therefore, as you pull all of that out, that's what's going to lead you into higher ground. That's what's going to propel you forward. So again, many of you buy into especially the politics that are happening upon your planet right now. There's two candidates, Adronis. We're not really too sure about either of them. There's this one candidate. We feel he's quite flaky. There's this other candidate. We feel he is an egomaniac. And we are absolutely shocked to see what has happened right now. We may not even have a president coming forward. There seems to be some type of democratic standstill. Exactly. Because that is what's meant to happen. The idea is that, and you have to pay attention to this, that your current president... If he were to continue into office into 2021, America would be engulfed, engulfed into a civil war. Now, the other candidate, if he somehow was able to sneak his way into the Oval Office and somehow become president in 2021, there would be an American civil war. Both candidates would bring this. This is why both candidates will not be leading the country in 2021. They will both be subdued from the office in 2021, from the energies that we are reading now. So Adronis, what are you saying? We won't have a president for a short amount of time, but yes, you will. You will have a replacement. There will be another that will come into the office, not your Joe Biden and not your Donald Trump. 
but somebody else. We do not have information relating to this unnamed leader at this time. But what we will say is that when they take office, they will be the ones responsible to help lead a new revolution upon the planet where other systems of government will also freeze. And as these other forms of systems of government will freeze and go through a transition period, those old leaders will be removed as well. We are not talking about the idea of you rebuilding a system. We are talking about the idea that the system is going to be completely torn down. It is going to be ripped out by its roots, and it is going to be tossed onto a fire. And it is going to be burned to ashes. That's what's happening to your political system. Not just in the United States. Everywhere. And this is what's leading us into 2021, the year of transition. It will indeed be even more intense than 2020, but on a different level, in a different way. You are seeing complete and total dismantling, deconstruction, ripping out the old roots of these corrupt regimes and thrown onto an enormous bonfire. And guess what? Many of you are going to be the ones to do this. You will be behind the transition. So, as you move from the point of no return, you are shifting into a new earth. A new earth, yes, still existing in third density, but it works together in a much more lighter way. The other reason why your President Trump and your Joe Biden cannot be president within the 2021 year is because they are not a vibratory match for the energies to come. It is a new earth. What we're saying is that December 21st, 2020, your earth has been pregnant for a very long time. And it is that date where she gives birth. We will say that again. It is December 21st, 2020, where the earth gives birth to a new consciousness. A new earth emerges. It is like a snake that is shedding its skin. The skin sheds, a new skin emerges. This is not the idea of a fourth density earth. But this is the idea of you shifting up an octave. So you're still on a third density, earth, fourth dimensional earth, yes. But again, you are now moving into a lighter period. What this lighter period means is that everything will start to accelerate by leaps and bounds because you're operating on higher frequencies. This is why we say it's so important for you to work on yourselves moving up into the point of no return because if you don't, the vibration of the earth is going to be so incredibly strong that if you are operating on a very dense level, you will plummet because you are not able to pick yourself up with the new frequencies that are being born upon this new earth. You had the individual upon your planet, known as Dolores Cannon. And prior to her transition, she spoke of a new earth being born. December 21st, 2020, is that new earth, the one that she has talked about. When you move into 2037, 2038, that is the idea of the harvest. That is moving yourself into different dimensions. But the new earth that's being presented to you is the one that the current earth is giving birth to. And the energies will be very, very powerful. They will move into a great acceleration. And everything that has been vibrating at a very low base level is now going to be ripped out from this earth. So, she has a new skin, but there still exists this corruption within her. 
But because the vibration is so incredibly powerful, because you're going to feel, many of you who are empathically adept, you will feel this as you move into December 21st, 2020. The air will be very different. It is the idea that the spiritual energy, the spiritual realm, that basically creates a haze between the physical world and the spirit world relating to a solstice is actually that energy that's peeling off this old skin. And therefore, the idea of a new conscious earth arises. That's what's happening. And this again is what's happening within a little over a month's time. We will say that as you get closer to it, many of you may start to feel this. You may start to feel like the energies on the earth are getting really, really intense. There's a very strong form of vibration that's taking place, especially a couple of weeks before. And many of you will still continue to feel it intensely a couple of weeks after. That's a solstice. But the solstice is therefore aligning this abridgment to assist the earth. She is like the, shall we say, doula or midwife that is helping the earth to deliver this new baby, to deliver this new consciousness. And that is what's going to happen. And we can guarantee you that 100% because this is a milestone. So with a new earth being born, she requires new leaders. She requires new systems. She requires new infrastructures. She requires a new way of life to which humanity is going to move into. And those who do not wish to participate are going to find themselves having a very difficult time because they will move into greater states of shock once they hear what is going to happen in 2021. Because much of your quote-unquote dark forces are going to not only be exposed, but removed. Your mainstream media is most likely too going to be frozen and either taken down or restructured in a new format. This may also lead to the idea of new companies coming together that will represent truth pertaining to news. So the idea of mainstream media will be caught up in scandals because they will be found guilty of aiding and assisting the idea of a corrupt election, of aiding and assisting the idea of censorship. The idea of your COVID-19 will come to an end in 2021, between the first and second quarter, because this too will be exposed, but not only exposed, dismantled. So, 2020 has represented the year of exposure. 2021 represents the year of transition or death. And what that means is everything that is corrupt, everything that is unnatural, everything that does not serve the natural energies of humanity, of the earth herself, will be taken down entirely. So, as we have stated, the two candidates in your American election right now will not be running the country in 2021. This, again, is almost a certainty. As we've stated, if you were to have either of these candidates take office, civil war would happen amongst the United States of America. Not only that, but other civil wars would actually start to brew in other countries. Because again, there is a very, very important catalyst that represents the United States of America. It represents the catalyst for great change. Your Donald Trump has served the four years that he needed to. But again, it has not been prophesied to the idea where he will continue on for another four years. That will not happen simply because too many people have exposed him. 
Too many people have created this slander against him. Too many people within your own United States are so absolutely enraged at him that the idea of him running for another four years would cause them to be extremely violent and thousands within your United States of America would die. The exact same thing would be shared if your Joe Biden took office. Thousands on the United States of America would perish. Not only that, but there would also be attempting to brew new wars. And that is not where humanity is going. It is under the jurisdiction of the divine plan, under divine will. So neither of those candidates are appropriate to run your country of the United States of America in 2021. There will be another. Another who has a little more of a cleaner record. Another who may also, and will hint at this, have connections to military. That's what we can share in regards to this other that is going to be appointed as the leader of your United States of America. Now, there are those of you that are asking the question, well, in our country, there are corrupt politics. And we say, not for long. All of this is going to lead into having the roots ripped out from the ground and tossed into the bonfire. This is all part of the divine plan. Again, the United States of America will lead the charge for this. That there will indeed be a freezing period, a grace period in that way, as it were. And through that time will be a complete and total re-infrastructuring of governmental systems. Because the old ones will be ripped out and thrown into the fire. Which means there will be an increase relating to mass arrests happening all over your planet. Some that are secret, some that will be revealed. There have already been many arrests taking place in your 2020. Some have been secret. Some have been revealed. But again, this will still continue to increase. There is a large takedown. And many of those that serve these corrupt agendas will be in shock about how quickly their empire falls. It's like looking at a stack of dominoes. Falling all so quickly in this pattern. So we will say, that regardless of where you live on the planet, that when you have a country that serves corrupt agendas, that particular form of government will not exist in 2021. They will be taken down. So there is a very large takedown that is taking place, that is going to take place in 2021, because that's the energy. Not only that, but there will be unveiling of new technologies that will follow. Many of these forms of technology will replace much of your fossil fuels upon your planet. So you will have introductions to new types of technology pertaining to your vehicles. So this can relate to the idea of hydrogen. This can relate to the idea of salt water and other particular forms of inventions that will come. There will also start to be much more of a demand from what you would know as flying cars, where the cars themselves will actually be able to conveyance themselves upon the land and upon the air. So there is going to be much more of a demand of that. There will be, in that sense, a much more increased movement relating to the dismantling of old fuels that have harmed the planet for a very long time pertaining to energy from your coal plants and your nuclear plants, etc., and that much of this is going to be replaced quite commonly by your solar. But there are also new inventions looking to come out that will represent the idea of magnetic technology. We have talked about this briefly the previous year. And that is starting to come along. There are developments taking place where there will simply be the idea of electromagnetic free energy systems. Simply the idea of representing free energy is the idea that it is inexhaustible. So working together with magnetics will very much be part of the new technologies to come. We cannot guarantee when this will be fully implemented, but we can guarantee that many of these areas will be looked at very heavily 
and there will be a lot of ripping out of those old roots pertaining to these old systems because the new appointed leaders that are coming upon your planet will not stand in any shape, way, or form for old corrupt forms of technology that harms the earth and that makes the few very rich. That is going to cease. So, as we have stated, 2021 is the year of transition, a year of death. It is the idea that it is a year of action. It is a year of great change. And as it is a year of action, as it is a year of great change, if you're not with that change, you will fall greatly behind and you will go through a great deal of shock and awe because there's a lot of information that's going to be revealed. Many of you that have put your faith into these old leaders are going to be shocked because you're going to see exactly what they have done. And that is going to be exposed in 2021. So yes, there is continued exposure. And yes, there is action. There is transition. So as you move forward through 2021, more of this dismantling will occur. You've already dug the holes. You've already gone deep into the soil. You've known exactly where these corrupt roots lie. And as we stated, it's the people that's going to dismantle this. The leaders will have their time in that way. But it's the people that are coming together. They will see what's happening and they will demand that new action be taken to take this completely out of the picture. And that's what's going to happen. So all of you are responsible for where you are moving ahead as a species. So again, life is going to continue after the point of no return. Life is still going to be quite intense. But again, for those of you who are working upon yourself because you're carrying your momentum forward, you're open-minded, you're listening, you're seeing a lot of these signs that lie ahead and you're walking right towards them. A door is in your face, you open that door and you step through. Some of you will kick it down. And then there are those in that sense who have absolutely no idea what's going on. They will be in such shock that they have for many years of their life put their faith into criminals. And this will shock them tremendously. So we are not saying this to hurt anybody. But again, you have to be very, very aware of who you put your energies towards relating to the nature of your own faith. Because the first thing is you need to take this energy and put it towards yourself. You need to rebuild that foundation with fresh wood. You need to have a strong foundation where you are not taking rotten pieces of lumber and feeling that that is going to be your foundation. For this rotten piece of lumber represents your heightened emotional states of tragedy, of sadness, of fear, of anger, the traumas that lay underneath, when you do that, you are creating a very, very rotten foundation. You need to clean yourself up. And this is what we say to all of you. Do not concern yourself about trying to advise other people when you are incapable of self-advisement yourself. You need to clean yourself up. You need to move into that state of self-correction. You need to build that foundation where you are living a life of trust, of great truth, of authenticity, of genuine nature, because you are accumulating love. You are accumulating support. You are accumulating compassion and joy in your heart. And you are being a shining example of someone who has attained self-correction. Therefore, as you are in that shining example, now you are in the alignment to truly assist other people. Because if you try to assist other people while you still have a rotten foundation, they're going to say something that's going to offend you. And now you're both going to want to put up your dukes and try to fight one another. Oh, how dare they say that to me, etc. I'm more evolved than they are and blah, 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 blah. And again, the egos take over. And now you're in a boxing ring trying to knock each other out with your comments that follow. That is not the way. 
Do not advise anybody until you are moving into a state of self-correction. When you start to feel and become vulnerable to what you have been able to see unfold within yourself that represents a disharmony, you're able to acknowledge that and you're willing to change. And as you're willing to change, you're accumulating love energy, as we've talked about many times before. And now you dissolve those disharmonies. Love is the antidote to everything. And we mean that very, very strongly and very literally. Love is the antidote to everything. When you put that love into your body, you can command it because it is purity. The reason why many of you get so worked up is because there's a lot of these unresolved matters within yourself. As soon as the light touches you, that energy starts getting ripped out by its roots and now you're witnessing it. And it comes through quite commonly when you talk to other people. Because when you're talking to other people, you feel an energy. Now, that person may be very, very loving, filled with light. But here's the thing. You're only ever experiencing your own energy. You can never experience the energy of another person because there's nobody else here. That person is a reflection, a mirror, a catalyst to the brand of energy that's coming into you now that represents illumination that is pulling all the filth out of yourself. And because your lens gets clouded, you instantly point the finger and think, that person did this to me. They must be a demon. They must be possessed. They must be an artificial intelligence. You're pointing at somebody else when you don't realize that three other fingers are pointing back at you. It is not another person's fault in regards to anything that has happened. Anytime somebody comes into your reality in that way, it's you telling yourself, this is a lot of the resonance of debris that has been left over. The aspect of what you term as self-imposed karma. And those actions that have been hostile and have been buried and can be buried lifetime after lifetime are still present. And that person represents an energy that can be complementary to its, shall we say, extinguishment, or can be in that sense a continual feeding of that energy altogether. It all depends on the person, on you. Please take it literally when we say to you, you are the only one here. The only one. There is no other soul in your universe. Ever. You're it. So, as you meet another person, you are gravitating to that other soul in their own universe, and you are tangentially touching the spheres, and that projection of that other person has been brought into your life because they represent a suitable vibration to yourself, to telling you what you're holding on to and what you need to let go of. That's their purpose. Once you have fulfilled that energy that's looking to go, you have extinguished it, you have replaced it with love, that person won't be a part of your reality anymore. They'll go. Or they will metamorphosize and change into another theme that is appropriate for you to continue to work with. That's how it works. This is the physics of vibration. This is the physics of life. There's nobody else here. There's only you. So, really it comes down to the idea, truly, that there's only God. And that you again are the reflections, the catalysts, the creations of God. To helping yourself understand what you need to let go of so that you can go home to God. That's really what's happening relating to this entire matter relating to this entire life. I'm a human being. I have the greatest contrast available through me. But I have to look at the deep extremes 
and I need to bring them to the light because I have free will and I can touch any band of this contrast that I wish. I can go as deeply into the darkness as I wish until I'm scared right out of it or I can go as high up into the light as I wish because the only one who is higher than me is God. And that's it. Below God is humanity. That's how powerful you are. But again, you have to develop your state of responsibility. And so you are going to realize this a lot more as you move into 2021 because there's going to be a lot more exposure. There's going to be a lot more action. There is going to be death placed upon these old systems that have represented corruption. Why? Because you're entering a new earth, December 21st, 2020. A third density earth, another octave, but skin has been shed off like a snake shedding its skin. That's what's happening. Just like what your Dolores Cannon has predicted. That's where you're going. So you would understand this as a type of elevation, as a type of ascent, but just into a different octave of earth. And as you move throughout the years ahead, you're going to notice that the corruption will be less and less. You'll notice that there will actually be a lot more fair treatment of people. You'll notice that there will be new alliances of nations being forged because even your United Nations will be looked into deeply and roots will be pulled out of that agenda as well too. Your European Union will be looked at deeply and roots will be pulled out of that as well too. Complete and total dismantling of the old. You may even notice that the United States of America may start to break up. You may actually have certain states that will become independent. This too could happen. It's a possibility. So you have a lot to look forward to in this 2021 year. If the 2021 year's transition is death, then what is 2022? The year of rebirth. A very positive year, a very powerful year. But of course, we will be speaking about that year a little more when you get closer to that time. So again, where there is death, there will be rebirth. There are seeds that are being planted right now all over your earth that are going to sprout up very, very quickly, like growth acceleration. And you are going to see these new plants emerge from the soil. And they are going to be quite beautiful. Because as these old roots are being ripped up, tied up into a bundle, and thrown into a bonfire, there's going to be replacement. Everything will always replace itself. Equivalent exchange. So that is exactly what is going to continue to happen as you move into 2022 under new leaderships, under new working together as communities, under new national alliances, after the complete and total dismantling of your COVID-19 agenda between the first and second quarters of your 2021. Because this too is part of an old psychological operation that will be greatly exposed from the very ones who have been contaminating your United States elections. So this is something that you have a lot to look forward to. We know there's a lot more on the way that will happen. But in the years ahead, throughout the 2020s, you are going to see a marvelous transformation before your eyes. There will still be the riffraff here and there. There will still be the pockets pertaining to the state of corruption that have separated themselves from the main lot. But they too, in that sense, can only get so far because they're operating on an earth that they cannot be sustained in. Many of them will be drenched in so much fear, they won't even know where to turn. That's what's coming. This is the time. And this is all possible because of divine law, because of divine will, because of the divine plan. 
We thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today. We will now take this moment to return to the conduit to begin a question and answer period. Thank you very much and one moment as we return to the conduit. <sighs> wow, <laughs> that was intense. Okay, well, thank you, Adronis. So I'll get back to him in a few moments. We're just going to move up through the chat here. If you guys do have some questions, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of questions that will come together here. So I'm just kind of scro uh, scrolling back up here. Um, okay, here's one from Yoshimi. This one just kind of came up here. Um, Adronis, how and when is the financial or monetary system going to change? Okay, one moment. How and when uh, is the financial monetary system going to change? Okay. We thank you very much for your question. As it relates to your monetary system, there has been an agenda about attempting to create an entirely digital fiat currency system that is currently in the works. This too will be foiled. Now, basically what is going to be happening as it relates to your monetary systems is that many of them will be backed, as you would say, backed by resources, all right? So some of you may have precious metals, that will be back to the states of currency. Some of you may go into cryptocurrency in that way. As we have talked about before, that around 2021 to 2023, around that time, that there will be a lot more introductions to new monetary systems that will come forward. But the whole idea in that sense is to dismantle entirely very much the corrupt agendas that are in the way, preventing these new financial systems from coming together. Because what the entire nature of the corrupt cabals, we will say, their entire nature is trying to keep this fiat currency together to basically phase out your physical cash altogether and attempt to make a digital currency that is fiat based. It is still centralized. We are not talking about decentralized currency like your Bitcoin or your Ethereum, etc. That is different. This is something that they are attempting to create altogether, centralized digital currency. So again, you will notice more and more takedowns that will take place as we stated moving into 2021. And again, continuing on to 2022, 2023. So as that, those core years happen, there will be a continual diminishment of that attempt altogether. And even during this core time, there will be new introductions to new financial systems. As we have stated, you will not have really a main financial system. You will have alternatives. You have different forms of systems. Again, backed currencies or cryptocurrencies, just to name these two. There may also be others that will come up as well too. But it is through your fiat currency system from those of the cabal, as you would say, that have attempted to keep a lot of this at bay, that have attempted to slander many other organizations that are trying to create these other particular forms of alternative financial systems because they see it as a very deep threat to their own empire. So, as you move into 2021 through to 2023, a complete and total dismantling of any form of fiat currency or plan or agenda altogether. All right? We thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Yoshimi. Um, oh, here's one from Galactic Woman. Hello, Galactic Woman. Uh, will the borders be opened to travel to other countries? Okay, one moment. We thank you very much, Galactic Woman. As it relates to your question, will borders be open to other countries? In time, yes. And again, in that sense, it all depends upon the cooperation of other countries. So again, as your COVID-19 becomes dismantled, there will be a lot more leeway pertaining to a greater opening up of many countries. Some countries may still decide to be locked down, but they will start to include themselves in regards to open travel in the times ahead. So you can look at this course altogether throughout the entirety of the year of 2021. We would say the first half of the 2021 year will be the most intense. The second half will have a little bit more of a resolve to it. We'll have a little bit more of a, shall we say, victorious energy to it. 
but it will still be throughout the entire year, a year of transition. So many countries will still work together in opening up their borders altogether. Some may delay because they still want to, again, arrange appropriate forms of agendas as well, too, or counter agendas to all of these old systems that are going down. But we would be appropriately optimistic in the idea of 2021 in its entirety to where many of the countries reopen their borders again. Not all of them, but many of them. All right? We thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Galactic Woman. Okay. All right. Yes, I mean, universal basic income, that's what they call it. Adronis was actually talking about that years ago, about universal basic income. And that is really the plan that they're trying to bring out in that way. But there's a true universal basic income as well, too, right? There's, there's the true one, and then there's the fiat one, right? So basically, if you look past the mirage, the corruption relating to what they're trying to do with this digital currency, let me just turn on a little light here, guys, so you can see me a bit better. Um, as you see this old currency system, you know, fiat currency system start to plummet, there will be new ones coming together. It'll really be at the point where there will be a lot of sustainability for everybody. There will be a true universal basic income, right? Many people talk about Nasera and Gesera, right? I've talked about that and I said, I don't really see those exact names coming about, but the spirit of what they represent, most definitely, right? Really, the idea of monetary systems will not be uh, a thing of our, of our great future, right? They're going to be transitional. So as we move out of the fiat currency, we start moving into much more, quote unquote, organic, or again, backed currency, cryptocurrency. But there's going to be a lot of prosperity funding taking place. So like I said, I don't see a Nisera Gesera, but something in regards to the spirit of what that represents, a prosperity funding. It'll basically have more governmental names to it, like universal basic income or something. But it's, I would just call it more like universal prosperity income because it's not basic, right? A basic income is, again, agenda-based, really. So when you're moving into prosperity income, where the world's wealth is shared with the people, that's true prosperity. So again, the essence of what I feel Nisera Gesera will be, right? But really not under those names. So I've looked into the timelines. I haven't seen anything about a Nisera Gesera, right? Just prosperity funding, really. Um, okay. <clears throat> Uh, Jonas has said 2023 launching a new currency between 2021 and 2023. Yeah, around that time. <clears throat> I mean, there's already there's already currencies right now, right? We have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have all these different types of currencies, but they're being slandered quite a bit. Many people are actually thinking that a lot of these uh, alternative currency systems are being created by the elite. No, the elite will want to centralize currency, not decentralize it. Um, let's go down the list here a bit more. <clears throat> okay, let me just go down a little bit more. Here's a lot of questions and a lot of comments. So <laughs> just trying to see if I can find a good one here. Uh, someone asks, who's going to appoint this new leader of America? Jonas has said in the presentation, he cannot say, okay, cannot be jeopardized. He will not give any information relating to who this new person is, okay? Could be male, could be female, um, but like I said, what he did give a hint was is that he has much. This this person he or she has much more of a clearer record, a cleaner record than either of the candidates, and that they may have connections to the military. Okay, so that's all really that can be shared, and he doesn't even say about how this is going to happen. You have to really just pay attention to the events as they start to happen. But we really don't have too much longer to wait for that. So basically, in that sense, they will take it to court. It will be frozen. The idea of the democratic system will be completely frozen because even though there is evidence of corruption, there's evidence of, you know, voter fraud in that way. And of course, you know, those responsible are going to basically get what's to them. But there's still the, the result, the effect of that, because now it's kind of an unclear election and it's kind of like at a standstill. Everything just freezes. So for a short amount of time, we may not actually even have a president, right? So there will be someone who may be appointed in, or I don't know if they're voted in or whatever. I don't know the system. <laughs> but nonetheless, there's going to be this new person that's going to come in, maybe around January or February in that way. Uh, again, don't hold me to that. It all just depends in regards to how these events play themselves out. But uh, when I saw this, firstly, like the, the election night, I was watching on, on Facebook and all that. 
I was excited because I was seeing the, the great amount of support that people had for Trump, right? Where he was basically having tens of thousands of people in all these rallies and all that stuff. I am not a Trump supporter, guys, as I've said before. I'm not waving a Trump flag. I'm not waving a Biden flag, right? I always look in the middle of these things. I always stay in the middle. But um, <clears throat> I was happy just to see the joy on people's faces and happy to see how people were getting excited about that. And that this would, of course, lead to a smokescreen. There is some type of smokescreen that will come together regarding this whole election that will sabotage it. And I felt that as well, too. Whatever is going to happen, because what I knew was going to take place is that Trump will still be president up until the end of his term. And then up until the end of his term, there's going to be some type of grace period. And then some new leader is going to come in. Right. So again, uh, it's going to happen like this all over the world as well, too, from what Adronis was saying is that many of the governments all over the world are going to have maybe this grace period or a freezing period where these old leaders are going to be apprehended or taken down and new leadership is going to be appointed. It wouldn't surprise me if there's new types of military officials that may actually come in and basically be interim leaders in that way. This is just my theory. It's not a fact. Okay. Uh, interim leaders in regards to military presence, right? coming in and basically creating these sting operations to take down more and more of the corrupt as we enter the new year. It could even come a little bit earlier before the new year as well, too. It just depends on how things unravel. But Adronis has been saying that this is going to be happening in 2021. So interesting times ahead for sure. Uh, going down the list here a bit more. Uh, yeah, some people do call it the Great Reset. Um, <clears throat> Adronis and I have always referred to it as the point of no return. It is a reset in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Because many of the corrupt were trying to use this time where they think that they could try and implement a new world order. They were never, ever meant to implement that, guys. That was never something that was destined, right? Earth is led by divine law. That's simply the matter of it is. Divine law triumphs over everything else. Okay? It's never man's control relating to what happens on this earth. Man has been given certain leeways so that some of these certain forms of agendas and situations can unfold so that we can look at what's happening and learn from it and transform through it. Right? That's all that's been happening. Man has never ever had full reign upon the earth relating to all of their control agendas. They're allowed to go to a certain amount of time and then they will break down. This has happened throughout history. Look at all the empires that have come and gone through our ancient past. Because many of these leaders are incarnations of a lot of these emperors and a lot of these kings and queens. Okay? And they still think that they can try and uh, completely take over the world and dominate it. They haven't, because if that was true, you wouldn't have fallen empires, right? All of these great empires that were all about rulership, all about war, all about territory, trying to take over everything, trying to control everybody, have always failed every single time. What makes us think that we're any different, right? If there's any of these corrupt agendas that have constantly happened, they're going to be on the way out. And they have served for a certain amount of time because they'll be allowed to be erected for a certain amount of time so that people can start to see a lot of this chaos, a lot of this corruption unfolding with these foundations. And then the earth is going to start shaking and these foundations corrupt. Uh, these corrupt foundations collapse under their own weight. Okay, when I'm talking about the earth shaking, I'm just talking about the energy of the collective consciousness, right? And there's a cosmic administration and there's divine will. So there's so many other different positions and branches of, uh, of authority that exist way beyond this world where humanity's corruption agendas can only go so far to point out an example of what we are here to learn and what we are able to transcend past. Once that example becomes a lot more clearer and the wheat has been separated from the chaff, then those empires will fall. That is exactly what we're witnessing now and we'll continue to witness on a much more larger scale because now we're moving into a new earth post December 21st, 2020. So when Adronis was saying that, I was like, whoa, uh, I did not know that. So <laughs> it was quite a surprise to me with him uh, saying that. So it's like Dolores Cannon was sharing. If you guys have followed Dolores Cannon's work, uh, I had the honor of being uh, on, on one of her uh, online 
uh, events before she transitions. And it was a great honor. And I've, I have a few of her books as well, too. And whenever, when she said, when I first got to know her, and she said, you know, it's, it's like the idea of this earth splitting. And Adronis has always talked about it like a snake shedding its skin, right? Or again, the, the splitting of worlds in that way. But basically what's happening is that the earth is giving birth to her another earth, but again, it's the skin that's falling off, right? And we are basically transiting ourselves into that new earth. So there's a new third density earth, right? And then at the end of the, the cycle, at the end of the age, then many of us can branch off and go to our own respective earths. Some people will stay here and feel like nothing's really happened. Some people will go to a fourth density earth, all right, where it's not has not been touched by man. Some people will go off planet altogether and go deeper into spirit, return to God. It just all depends upon the person, right? We can never really predict that on a collective general level. But this of what's happening right now is the idea of a splitting of worlds, or as I would refer to it, a snake shedding its skin, the shedding of the skin of an old earth and a new earth coming in its place. So, or a new birth, as Adronis has referred to it, mother earth giving birth to the child, which is the new earth. Beautiful. I love it. Okay. Uh, let me just go down here a little bit more. Uh, just going down. You know, there's there's some people say, oh, Brad, you're, you're spot on. I said, well, I'm not always spot on, guys. There's times where I haven't been able to be spot on on things. I'm not doing all this stuff to be spot on, right? When I bring in Adronis, it's not about us saying, oh, yeah, everything that we're sharing right now is going to be 100% legit. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes there are setbacks. Sometimes there are other events that overshadow other events, right? You ha You guys have to look at the idea of, you know, quote unquote, the future. It's not just like looking at a fine line. And saying, oh, this is going to happen, 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 this is going to happen. That fine line only exists based on what has happened, right? But when you're looking at a lot of these different forms of energies that are in the ethers, that, okay, there's a good possibility that this energy can come through if the collective consciousness reaches this point, And we can see things happen. But then there are milestones, okay? And those milestones cannot be changed. So it's like looking at the tarot. Tarot deck, right here. There is major arcana within the, the tarot deck when a person has a reading, okay? That major arcana is a benchmark. It is a milestone for them. It's something that they're going to go through. How it manifests itself can be, again, a mystery to the person because they're not really being told that too much. Uh, but nonetheless, that milestone is going to be met, okay? So if we're looking at it like major and minor arcana, okay? Minor arcana has the ability to shift. It has the ability to transition. It has the ability to change. When you're looking at a major arcana pertaining to a deck, that is going to happen because that's all part of your life lesson. That's a very big part of one's own soul contract, a milestone that they have put in there, and that milestone has to be crossed. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Well, the same thing goes with Earth because Earth herself is a being. She has milestones that she needs to meet, okay? And some of those milestones uh, that we're starting to see right now are unchangeable. So the idea of December 21st, 2020, we're making a big shift in the point of no return. You can't change that, okay? 2037, 2038, the end of the age, harvest. Can't change that, okay? Those are milestones, the falling, falling and rising of different civilizations that will come up, that have bring forward a great influence of uh, society and the collective consciousness. You can't change that. Okay? Those are the major arcana relating to the divine plan. The fall of the corrupt, major arcana. Can't change that. Okay? How it comes about is anybody's guess. It may not be from what Adronis has shared. Okay? I don't care, guys. If the predictions that I share or Adronis shares is 100% accurate or 80% accurate or 50% accurate, I don't give a crap, okay? This is just the momentum of energy that's coming through right now, and we'll see, right? As I always say with other predictions, take them with a grain of salt, even with what Adronis shares here. Take it with a grain of salt. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. I couldn't give a crap if you do or not, right? It's just that this is what's being shared through me, 
And okay, that's great. We have maybe a possible foundation here, something that can come about. Oh, well, something did come out together that Adronis predicted or that I predicted. And that's great, fine. I don't need a merit badge. <laughs> I'm just happy it comes through in the way, right? I'm hoping that if there's anything that was fundamentally negative, that it would not come to pass because I certainly want to be wrong about those things. But I don't care, guys. I don't care about getting a merit badge. I don't care about getting a gold star whether these predictions come to pass or not. I share this because I'm very passionate about sharing this. It comes through. Adrona shares this information because we're getting an idea of a groundwork. All right. Some things may be up in the air. Some things may change. That's okay. But we're looking at the major arcana altogether pertaining to the divine plan. That's what matters. I don't care what percentage of my stuff is bullshit. I don't care. Okay. It's just a matter of being able to present this out, lay the groundwork, Let's see where we're headed. So now we have something to look forward to. Okay, that's it. And you can throw this away, chuck it in the garbage. You can stop listening right now. You can pull away from my channel and that's fine too. I'm not gonna be hurt by it, okay? I'm always just speaking what is truth that's flowing through me, guys. I have no hidden agendas here to say, oh yeah, you guys better believe in my predictions or else I'm gonna, I'm gonna unsubscribe from all of you, <laughs> right? No, guys, don't care about that. I do all this because this is who I am. This is what I love to do. Bringing in Adronis, I love doing that, sharing this information. And if it resonates with you, that's all that matters. If it doesn't resonate with you, who cares? Throw it away. Don't need to look at it, okay? You're not hurting me either way, right? It's all good. All right, so let's move on down here a little bit more. Okay. Yes, and that's a good comment. Uh, you are not in reality, but reality is within you. Yes, ex reality exists through you, right? You're the projector here. Everything else is the projection. Weirdest election ever. I hear you. <laughs> but again, weird is not always a bad thing. It's letting us know there's a lot of shakeup. There's a lot of new things happening that have really been out of our expectations. And that is great. Okay. Someone says, oh, maybe it's General Flynn. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm not getting any information relating to this person. It's like I'm looking at a silhouette of a person. And I don't know their face. I don't know what they look like. I don't know. There's a couple of hints Adronis gave. And that's all I can really comment on. It. Maybe. We don't know. Keep it a mystery. <laughs> uh, free energy. Yep. Free energy is coming through. It's again like what Adronis was sharing. That there may be again, a lot more improvement of, of solar power taking over a lot of these old plants. And that there's a lot of uh, magnetic energy that's coming together, magnetic technology that will be, will be plentiful, that we'll be able to uh, implement into society as well, too. He was talking about that for the 2020 year as well, too. And there are some movements towards that. When it rolls out, though, I'm not sure if it will be 2021 or 2022, but I don't think we'll have to wait too long to wait. When we're moving into this new Earth, right, it's an air like Earth, right? It's a lot of air symbols, a lot of air signs, right? Jupiter and Saturn conjunct together into Aquarius, right? So we're seeing a lot of uplifting. We're seeing a lot of new technologies. We're seeing a lot of new education. We're seeing a lot of new uh, government happening together. Everything's going to be pulled apart that represents the corrupt. The corrupt really represent the energy of the, of the old Earth energy, right? Very, very rigid, very solid, very unchanging in that way, very slow to change. All of that is now going to shift. So this is why Adronos has been giving the uh, information relating to 2021, where there's a tremendous shift because we're going to be in a lot of air, right? A lot of air energy, a lot of air element, Aquarius, right? All of this crap is going to be ripped out from the ground. And again, like I said, massive exposures, right? So it will still be an exposure year in 2021. But more than that, it's action being taken upon exposure. It's not just this, right? It's this. We're pulling things out. We're ripping things out. We're throwing it into the fire. Damn, it's going to be intense. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Um, so what with members of our family staying in 3D? Well, we're still in 3D, guys, right? Like I said, this is another octave, okay? Adronis has not said that this is a third density to fourth density shift. That happens in 2038, okay? When you move up into third, and only, only certain people are going to fourth, okay? This is a new third density Earth. So again, it's as Adronis was saying, is that the energy is going to be so intense and accelerating because the frequency is going to be lifting up so much 
that if these people in that sense, whoever they are, family members, friends, strangers on the street, what have you, are very much completely devastated by their own despair and their own agendas in life and how they're in complete and total shock that they've been supporting criminals for many years and they're actually getting this, yeah, it's going to hit them very, very hard. Some will maybe be able to look past this and will start to work on themselves. But again, it's all about the idea of the closed-minded and the open-minded. That's all it comes down to, right? If you're an open-minded person, you got nothing to worry about, right? You're going to move through this uh, through through flying colors, right? And thank you to the contributions, guys. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> you're going to be passed. You're passed through this through flying colors. It's the people that are very rigid, who are very stubborn, who are very closed, who don't want to change, who are just like this, and they're pouting, and they're angry, and they're furious, and somebody better come along and change something for me because I can't stand this. Well, guess what? No one's going to come and change your reality, okay? And those are the ones that are on the sinking ship, right? So it's an analogy that I used before. It's the Titanic, all right? The Titanic represents the old cabal. And there's a rescue ship coming. And many of us are on that rescue ship. And our families are on the Titanic. And we're saying, just reach my hand, take my hand. I'll pull you into the rescue ship, we'll go. Screw that. No, my government's gonna save me right? My leaders are going to save me. They promised. And I'm not going anywhere. They have to save me, even though this the, the ship's going belly up, right? It's ready to sink right down into the ocean. Or like this. Poof, they swat away your hand. F you. Not going anywhere. My government will take care of me. Government will never betray me. These agencies, they'll never betray me. They promised while this person is sinking on the ship, okay? You can't do anything about that, okay? Do not put your own personal responsibility of feeling, I gotta rescue people, okay? That is arrogance, no offense, okay? Because I was like that. I feel like I have to pull people up. Come on, come on, you're going the wrong path, you gotta do this. It's exactly what I was like when I was first starting this path. I was trying to get my ex-wife to see it my way. No matter how much I tugged, no matter how much I pulled, no matter what I did, nothing. Brad, you're crazy, you're insane, you're an idiot, you're this and you're that and you're the other thing, right? That's all that happened, right? I was certainly in the mentality of trying to think that I had to rescue my family, that I had to rescue my ex-wife, that I had to rescue my, my siblings, I had to rescue uh, my parents, all of that, right? That was not the way. So again, we have to understand we're not here to feel like we are stamped with the, the mark of responsibility and we have to save every single person we come across. Don't be silly, okay? It's not about that. Is that what Jesus did when he was here? Is that what Buddha did when he was here? Was he picking up people over his shoulder and saying, come to the promised land with me? Come up into heaven? Come, in, come into nirvana? No. So why do you guys think you have to do that? Hmm? Can you answer that? You're not responsible for anybody else. You are being the shining example of who you are. People will see it or they don't. Right? So, you're the light. You're being yourself. You're correcting yourself. You're moving into states of self-correction. You're uplifting yourself. You're feeling wonderful in life. And you're always here to open up an extended an olive branch to helping a person here. That's all we can do, guys. This is the most you can do. What I'm doing right now. And that's what will happen to many of you. And you get aggravated. You plummet because you feel, I was not able to save my family. I was not able to save my friends. Who the heck told you that you had to? You are following the path that is true to you. You are extending that olive branch. It's always there. But some will smack that hand away because they think you're friggin' nuts. They think you're out of your mind. They cannot interpret the light as you have been able to interpret. Because you have not been able to feel like someone is taking your hand, that is not meaning that you have to go into a state of despair. We are all infinite, eternal souls. We are always together. If you think 
that the only time you're ever going to see your family is when they're in their body. You are deluding yourself. And what type of inner work are you actually doing? If you're not able to see people beyond their bodies, if you're not able to see past this reality on a physical level, then what exactly are you doing for inner work? Because that's not inner work. That's you succumbing to the illusion. That's you succumbing to melodrama. When a loved one passes away, all right, and I've had loved ones pass away, and I've stayed in contact with them, right? You've got to get out of this field of illusion, a feeling that if a person's body is here, then that must be all that there is. That must be all that represents with that person. No, guys. No, it goes on. You're always in connection with that person. Your memories of them, your thoughts of them, right? Your feelings of them is there. And I have taught this to many people who have done sessions with me, who I've gone to workshops and events with, and I have shown them, you can connect with your relative. You can connect with your friend who has transitioned. They haven't really gone anywhere. They've gone into dimensions that we cannot perceive through this physical reality box, right? Through this body. Because we do not have that overlay of dimensions that we are able to perceive through this body. There are other dimensions all around us right now where people are walking to and fro through your room. And you don't even know it because they're operating in different dimensions. They're operating in different veils, right? So we got to get out of this mentality of feeling that if someone kicks the bucket, then that's it. Why do you think Abraham Hicks? always makes fun of the idea when people croak, right? For those of you who are Abraham Hick, Hick fans, right? I've uh, watched quite a few of her videos myself, okay? And I laugh when she says, yeah, well, he croaked. You know, my husband croaked. That's it. They make fun of it because it's not the end. There is no such thing as death. It's just a boundary, right? You transcend a boundary. You come into a new theme, you come into a new way of existence. You never die. Your soul, your spirit, your eternal, your infinite, your everlasting, you never end. Really let that sink in. And that every single person here is like that? Absolutely. Your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your best friend, your partner, your kids, everybody. So what exactly are you afraid of? You're taking yourself too seriously. And that's the problem. You take this life too seriously as if this is the only thing that exists. And that is from a very, very simplistic view. A simple-minded view, and that's not the way it is. There is life after life, beyond life, more life, ever life, everything. There's one life. And that one life will always cross the boundaries of different dimensions. It will unveil itself a lot more and a lot more and a lot more the more we expand ourselves into great love, great trust, great genuine, genuineness, great authenticity of being. You are never, ever truly alone. People around you all the time. People from other dimensions walking around you right now. Some of you may pick this up. Some of you may not. It all depends on your journey. But if you are truly committed to wanting to talk to your family again, your friends again who have transitioned, you can, right? It's all just a matter of trusting what's in here. And this is what we have been bred out of doing. And it's horrifying. We feel, oh, nope, this is it. You got this flesh suit. You got this physical life. And that's all there is. If you're seeing anything else, you're crazy. You're probably doped up on medication. <laughs> You have an overactive imagination. You have a fantasy-prone personality, and that's it. And doctors will write you off. People will write you off because they are not putting themselves in your shoes. They are trying to put their shoes on your feet, right? So that you can only see reality their way. They do not know who you are. They do not know what you experience. They do not know what you see. Only you know that. So why would you try to give so much power to a person who cannot see as you do? Why would you give so much power to a doctor, to a friend, to a family member who just thinks you're going crazy when they've never even bothered to step and see something from your own perspective? Why give them power? Oh, Brad, because they're my dad. They're my mom. 
They're my best friend. They're my husband, my wife. They're my kids. So what? Oh, okay. <laughs> so what, right? Now you see, just because someone is close to you does not mean that they are your deity. They are not living above you, right? I'm sharing this with you guys because this is so common with a question that I get all the time. You know, my, my friend passed away, my family member passed away. What can I do? Uh, what about the ascension? Are they going to make it? Do I have to rescue anybody? You know, it's a bunch of dribble. It's a bunch of propaganda because that's what you feel you have to do. You have to get as many people tying and piling on top of your shoulders and you got 20 people here. Okay, let's rush to the light. No, guys, get out of that delusion. All right. That's what I have to share about that. Because again, that question comes up to death. And again, thank you very much for the contributions, guys. I really appreciate it. $100 contribution. Well, thanks, man. That was great. <laughs> uh, this is from Keith. So much gratitude for you and your work, Brad. Thanks, Spirit, for showing me the way here. You guys are showing yourselves. I'm just being a catalyst. Remember, you're the only one here. Right. Thank yourselves, guys. Big pat on your back, on your shoulder right now, okay? You're the ones that lead you here. You're the ones that lead you to grace. You're the ones that lead you to heaven, all right? It's all through you. I'm just a catalyst. I'm just this little hologram here saying, hey, guys, in my own universe, doing my own thing, and just being a little catalyst from one universe to another saying, hey, what's up, guys? How's it going, <laughs> right? Okay, so guys, we're almost out of time. I think we'll take one more question before we wrap up here. Um, you are immortal. You got it. Every, every single one of us is. Um, okay, here's uh, Mattis, 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 Mattis I love. Okay, I guess her name. <laughs> After the 21st, will we be able to move forward? I feel like I'm waiting for something before I can write again. Um, depends on you, right? It depends on you. Like I said, right now is the good time to do a lot of work on yourself, to really work on educating yourself, on realizing, again, is there rotten wood in the foundation in that way? What do you feel that you want to do through yourself that you're willing to improve, right? Are you going to improve your communication? Are you going to improve your friendships? Are you going to improve your creativity? Are you going to improve your tolerance, your patience, right? We want to start a journal, guys. This is all just going back into past videos I've done as well, too. So please watch my past video, guys, if you're new to this, right? BCR technique, TC technique, right? Working together with the black ball meditation, looking into the emotional transformations, right? Emotional attachments, traumas. There's a lot of videos about all this, okay? And we are shifting out of that. We are moving out of everything that causes us despair, causes us conflict, right? And the only way that we're fe feeding that energy is because we're staring right at it. Here's conflict, here's despair, here's pain, here's the pain body, okay? And I just keep uh, putting so much energy, oh, woe is me, I got so much pain in my body and I'm in despair and I can't stand it. And then it starts to grow, all right? So what do you do? You realize there's something over here. So rather than staring at the pain body 24-7, here's love, here's happiness, here's compassion, here's joy, here's authenticity, here's the genuine nature. And you shift. You turn your head. I prefer this. I'm going to become the person that I want to become. I'm going to become that loving being. I'm going to become that authentic being. All I ever had to do was turn my head. And this is all people do is this, you know, do you have a neck? No, I can't move. I'm constantly looking at my pain body. I'm never going to move. Well, what if I'm ringing a bell over here? Screw the bell. Over here, looking at my pain body. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> and they can't move their neck, right? It's like nothing. They can't even move their torso whatsoever. They're constantly in the pain body. They're constantly fighting. They're constantly conflicted because they are in trance. They are hypnotized, right? So when we get out of that hypnosis, when we break from that because we're willing to change, we see love. And now we start putting that into ourselves. We start accumulating love. You guys have already heard me say what I've talked about with lack in love. And now when you come into this world, you do not have either. You are neutral. You are innocence, right? Innocence is truly to be neutral. It's just to be the essence of everything, 
right? And it's not until we're stimulated by love that we accumulate love. It's not until we're stimulated by lack that we can stimulate lack, right? It's our choice. Where lack is in the body, love is the antidote to getting it out, right? So again, I have videos on that. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up for now. Thank you so much. I'm going to bring Adronis in just one more time as he's going to give his farewells to all of you. Okay, one moment. <clears throat> We thank you very much once again for the opportunity of this interaction. We thank you very much once again for your participation within this interaction today. Again, we leave you with the idea that as we have stated, everything that we share is simply that of our perspective, our point of view. For all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very hearts, beings, and souls. Understand that what you are going through right now is all part of the shift that many of you have felt coming. That it is all part of a grand equation that will therefore cancel out all corruption, all negativity, all unnaturalness upon your planet. Because she is being reborn. She is shifting herself into a new alignment. And you will be part of a world that many of you thought would never come. But now it's coming. And the transition will continue, but in a much more accelerated way. And this represents 2021 onward. And that where you are going as a civilization will be in a state of full cooperation, full support, full love and happiness, working together. Because that is what the original blueprint of humanity represents. Love, compassion, support, community, and working together. I am Adronis of Sirius, and we will now return to the conduit. Goodbye for now. Okay, thank you guys. Have a great rest of the weekend, and I will talk to you again on Monday. There's a Monday special for Q&A, again, just between me and you guys on the chat. All right, thank you again, and that'll be happening at 11 a.m. Pacific. All right, you guys take care, and we'll talk soon. Namaste.